On my wrist, I have a brand new release, and it is a version 2. The brand has decided to make the version 2 a little bit smaller than the version 1, which I think is a really good decision. And to me, and one other person at least, it looks a little bit like, well, when you've had a couple of drinks, it's a little bit dark and you sort of squint a little bit. It looks a little bit like a Rolex a Submariner and a Seiko Samurai have done the deed, and yeah, this thing popped out. Now, some of you might be thinking, this guy's lost his mind. Where's he getting Rolex Submariner and Seiko Samurai from this watch? Well, look at the overall proportions of the watch, the bezel and the bracelets. Like I said, if it's dark, you've had a couple of drinks and you sort of squint a little bit. There's a little bit of Rolex Submariner there. And of course, the case. Look at the sharp angles and the facets. Definitely a little bit of Seiko Samurai there. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. Well, like I said, I wasn't the only one to think it. Um, when I posted the unboxing video on I Like Watches 2, um, yeah, someone commented and said exactly the same thing. And I was already thinking it, to be honest. So yeah, it's not a bad combination, is it? And actually, I think it looks pretty good. The original one, the version one I reviewed a long time ago, I do think that watch, or I did then think that watch was too big. It was also bronze, if I believe. And I don't even think it came on a bracelet, the one that I reviewed. So... Yeah, I much prefer this one. It's smaller, obviously a little bit lighter. It's come on a nice bracelet and um, yeah, it's stainless steel, not bronze. So this is, I was going to say, much more up my alley, which I think it is. Right, guys, I'm just pausing the review of this Phoebus Leviathan for just a brief momento to give you guys a second or two to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. 75% of you watching my videos are not subscribed. What's going on? That number is way too high. And if you are a sub, then maybe hit the like button and the bell notifications icon so you don't miss out on future uploads. Cheers, guys. Thanks for your support. So Phoebus are making this watch available from the 1st of Feb. At this moment in time, I don't have the prices. If I get them before I upload this video, I will add them to the screen, but they'll be offering the usual sort of launch discount, 15% off. This watch houses the NH35, so you'll be expected to pay somewhere in the region of 300 odd dollars i think for this watch and they're offering this watch with some really nice pastel colors which we've seen on other watches from them before um yeah they offered me this black one to review for you guys it wouldn't be my pick although i do think it is probably one of the better looking ones i do like the white dial version um and i do like the pastel colors to be honest so yeah i think the white dialed version is probably my favourite, but um, yeah, I think they've done a really nice job of this one, actually. Great decision to make it a little bit smaller, although it is still quite chunky and heavy, and on my wrist, a touch top heavy, I think. The clasp isn't the heaviest and chunkiest clasp, it is still quite a thick, sort of chunky case, a lot of steel in this case, and the outer shell, I pointed this out in my unboxing video, the outer shell feels a little bit thin and um, yeah, there's no double pushes. The inner elements are milled, of course. So there is a bit of weight in that clasp and there's a little bit more taper on this bracelet than I would expect from Phoebus, actually. Quite often they produce uh, broad bracelets with a little bit of taper and this one um, tapers more than normal. So I think that's just contributing to there being a little bit less weight under your wrist but still it's not so top heavy that it's uncomfortable um yeah definitely wearable and despite me saying it's the love child of a rolex submariner and seiko samurai i do think there is plenty of originality i don't think that's what they were going for i just think there's a little bit of that like i said if you sort of squint in a dark room having had a couple of beers but yeah um, I like the look of it. I like the angles. I like the corners. Um, they're not too sharp. The finishing is nice. You always know you're going to get decent finishing from Phoebus. Um, so yeah, interesting hands as well and applied indices. They're a sort of matte finish. Um, the frame around the date window as well is done with the same sort of finishing and you've got a matte bezel insert as well. It is ceramic, but it's not uh, polished. It's a matte finish. So not too much um, bling on this watch. In fact, I don't even know if there's any polished surfaces. Let me have a look. No, I don't think there is at all. It is fully brushed or uh, sort of matte finish, everything. The crystal is about the only reflective surface on this watch. So a strong, toolish, sort of, I don't know, machined and mechanical feel to this watch. You'll get the usual specs as well from Faber, Sapphire, Crystal. 200 meters of water resistance, um, which is great news. They do produce some 300 meter water resistant divers. I tend to find those a little bit um, chunkier than I prefer. Um, although this one for a 200 meter diver is still quite chunky. 
Um, but yeah, 200 metres of water resistance, screw down crown, screw down case back, AR coating, decent loom. I'll do all the usual tests at the end of this video, including my new feeler gauge test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at some, well, areas of this watch and I'm going to try and shove some feeler gauges into some gaps and see um, how tight the tolerances are, like between the lugs and the end links. And that's something I'm going to do now, and um, especially when watches have bracelets. So we're going to try and gauge um, how tight the tolerances are. And I think that is to some degree an indication of build quality because, well, cheaply made watches tend to have massive gaps everywhere and um, yeah I suspect the gaps on this are pretty good stick around to the end of the video if you want to see nice bracelet on this watch as well and the end links um, do suit the case well it's a weird look though isn't it um, <laughs> yeah the way that that sort of flat surface has the end link um, which sort of matches and it's quite a prominent flat surface definitely a sort of feature of the watch but then you've got some fairly standard yet slightly angular um, sort of three link links and there's a few little touches that I really really like and um, the numbers on the bezel they sort of flare out a little bit like the crown look at the crown it's sort of I don't know cone shaped to some degree and the applied indices the hands and that frame around the date window it's definitely different I don't think I've ever seen those elements finished like this before it's a sort of well, weird sort of satin silver finish isn't it and the grip on the bezel is in quarters the bezel action is nice fairly even decent resistance although the clicks aren't particularly crisp they're a little bit muted and um, but the alignment is perfect that is something that feeders yeah always gets right solid end links solid links screw pins i think it's only really that safety latch and the outer shell on the clasp that just feels a little bit thin one thing i have noticed is i think this watch would have benefited from female end links not only would it have shortened um, the case length to some degree although there's a decent amount of downturn i guess to those end links um, what i'm seeing is the second link um, when i'm holding the watch and just interacting with the watch I've basically damaged or scratched up the end link, haven't I? Um, there's some marks appearing already, which is basically the second link um, touching the first link. I'm showing you pictures. It's difficult to explain. Cool case back as well. They've not just etched in those specifications into the steel. Um, they've actually coloured them black. And um, yeah, I don't think I've seen this case back from them before. Um, the usual logo emblazoned all over the watch on that safety latch, on the case back, on the crown and on the dial. Um, yeah, you love it or you hate it, don't you, that octopus? Right, let's wrap things up. Um, quick legibility test. Now, I'm going to do the legibility test a little bit different this time. I'm going to flash the watch to you for one second, showing a random time. Then I'm going to flash the watch to you for half a second, and then a quarter of a second, and then a tenth of a second. And if you can read the time on the watch on every occasion it's very legible and i guess um yeah how legible it is will be determined on um, which ones you can read and which ones you can't and i'm also going to show you some clips of me shoving my feeler gauges poking and prodding this watch basically to determine how big some of the gaps are and i'm going to gauge what is good and what is not on well, my, my limited experience, I should say, and with these feeler gauges so far, that will tell us whether or not um, the tolerances are pretty good. I think they are. I suspect they are on this watch. And of course, I'm showing you the loom degrading as well over a five minute period. Um, Phoebus always includes lots and lots of loom. So um, yeah, decent loom. Right, guys, as always, a massive thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. If you've got any questions about this watch, add a comment in the comments section or hit me up, oldmantimegary at gmail.com. And I've put a link in my video description taking you to their various websites if you're interested in this watch. Right, guys, as always, thanks for watching.